Bula, Bula, everyone. Thank you for logging in. Greetings, greetings. You're not going to say my mic. Very nice. 
me kulukulu bakum pula sar cikgu beri kena nafu vale ne offer alir bakar rong cikgu mengo me kulukulu menan ronga dollar dollar bina bina kau bakar lebu na share tetoka enda me rong ada bakar keri cikgu enam bungi bina kini kuah bakum pula sar cikgu ni bikin ni tova kau sar na biokani enda bunuh ada bunga ni nisya mati kau mekina sanggol cikgu ni na bakum pula enam bungi bina kini kuah Aku maru tak apa kali pun ni darah ni dalam isi apa tak apa kebiokani, and as bong bina kini kuat, bong searching a weekend dalam ram, Happy International Women's Day, weekend ni kerja kerja dalam ram ini siapa tu kumai, and biasa ibu rumah ni bola ni bola ni bola bina ka, kita malah pampul searching a dingo, mai Hawaii, bakal bola searching a dingo, mai Serbia, mai Europe, bakal telinga kita bakal bola ngol searching a dingo. Mai serene. Waktu lo sakit juga yani, bikin ni tolong kesar na turang na merama na dorbo nongon eleo. Bikin ni nala lain. Na bunuh tapi ngau ni sembuh tiku mikin na bunuh bina kini kuah. Sangol itu kaya ni na bakam bula. Ni tak ni rong bina kini kaya ni na biu libu libu ni bet talan noa na talan noa. We doctor ting. Kau itu nong bunuh bina ka bunuh ni bet talan noa. Erto na sembuh tiku mikin na erto na merama beti nani. Er na bunuh bina kau. Kau itu nong sukar listali tiku dalam ngante tiku. Er na yang baki tin kerja Wah, bit sangat bulka bitu. Nampaki ya Turki nana non tempat ramah bulan yang untuk kain ikua nana na itu bi ni anji seni toa ni nampaki tin kerja bit sangat bulka bitu. Very good evening to you all wherever you logging in from. I know I can see people greeting us from Sabu Sabu. Eh, sambul bina ke Sabu Sabu, sambul bina ke lebu kau belau. Also sambul bina ke Denis connecting in from Suva. Boleh bina ke Villa Mewangalebi, Loseli di Batik Kota and the teachers in Mongolia, and boleh boleh bina ke and Monica May, Monica connecting in from Auckland, Kiora, Kiora to everyone logging in from from Auckland, New Zealand. So anyone connecting in from there, and also I have some sisters here from the United States also. Bina ke bina ke pakai lembu for connecting in, boleh bina ke una pun tidak kuat, mungkin boleh bina ke tadiingu. We keep it all about our own. We see how much we may England is telling us. So from England, looks like they must have just woken up. So a very good morning to those of you connecting in from England and from Europe. We now have a level for accepting a warm invitation to join us on this very special evening, special Talanoa to commemorate the International Women's Day. So it's the eighth of March. Uh, in the other side of the dateline, it's still the seventh on our side, uh, but we are just so grateful uh, that we can be able to um, invite our guest. Uh, our chief guest today uh, is uh, Florence uh, Julian, and she's also accompanied by her two beautiful daughters uh, from Nanronga, uh, Clarinda and Philadelphia. So at this uh, time, I would like to uh, greet you all and uh, first of all, let's travel over to Sydney, Australia. How are you feeling today, Florence? Uh, uh, good evening, Dr. T. Well, it's evening here. <laughs> and uh, good evening to all your listeners and a warm welcome from Sydney. I'm sending a strong kangaroo hug from Sydney and a warm koala hug from Sydney. So if you're in a cold region, these are all warm hugs. If you're in a hot region, I'm sending cool hugs. <laughs> And we understand that it's raining and uh, uh, there seem to be yeah, a couple of days of bad weather over there, but you're okay and yeah. safe where you are? We're okay. Uh, it's still uh, lots of rain, more than we're accustomed to. Um, so it's not a good sight, really. Yeah, it's, it's kind of restricting everybody in some way, public transport or... Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Florence. It didn't stop me from coming on this show, though. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all been looking forward to, you know, have you join us. And uh, so many of my friends were also excited, especially many of us who uh, always, you know, follow the Hibiscus Festival in Fiji and to invite you. Um, you know, way back in 1977, it'll be uh, going down memory lane for all of us. And we are just so grateful that uh, you accepted our invitation to be here tonight. Um, so sure. we'll say Bula to your two beautiful daughters. Which one should I start first? We'll start with Philadelphia, I think. <laughs> She's <laughs> okay. the older of the two. <laughs> okay, like a Philadelphia. So just say 
uh, Mula and greetings to the listeners, Karen. Oh, um, thanks for having us, Dr. Ting. Uh, hope everybody's well uh, on uh, International Women's Day. Um, and yeah, um, calling in from Serbia. It's uh, morning time, it's snowing, but I'm uh, nice and warm inside, so it's all right. <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining us as well. So what time is it over there? Is it nine o'clock in the morning? Yeah, it's just 20 past nine. Okay. All right. So in the morning. When, uh, shout out to all the aunties and uh, watching on the live. <laughs> on okay. <Facebook>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we like we like we like bullet to all the aunties. Uh, <laughs> so great to connect with uh, with Philadelphia, who is logging in from um, Serbia. Yeah, so anyone listening in will know that Serbia <laughs> is in Europe. So that's where she's logging in from. She's the older of the two daughters. So now we'll go uh, to the younger one. Uh, Aloha, Clarinda. Aloha, my kako. Bulubinak, everybody. Happy International Women's Day. Um, Nayadango Clarinda, Ongani Nandranga, Nanovokoro o Kumave, Nanovokoro ni Basu o the Pea Samoa, Nanogomatanitu o Riva Sanga. Um, but yeah, cool, everybody. I'm excited to do this. I'm, I've, I'm also like, I just shared the live to my Facebook and I'm just seeing all the comments. And yeah, it looks like the typical. It, it's, it's the it's the time that we get to see just how um, um, world famous in Fiji mum is. Everyone commenting like, "Yay, it's the queen! The queen yeah. is here! The queen is here!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for having so, us. so you are connecting in from Oahu, yeah, Clarinda? Yeah, yes, yeah, west side of Oahu, why and I? Okay. Oh, So for those of you listening in, uh, um, Florence is joined by uh, two of, uh, well, two daughters, uh, Philadelphia connecting in from Serbia and Clarinda uh, connecting in here from Hawaii. Um, so Vinakabakalev, Sarah Florence. So now we'll go over to you now. And uh, perhaps if you can just uh, uh, greet, uh, I think you've got your sisters and your cousins and the whole family and maybe some of your classmates who are listening in, just giving you the time to greet yeah. them uh, now, Florence. Black. Look, um, hi, welcome. Um, so nice to have you. I know Monica's here. Hi, Mo. And I know Liebling, my younger sister, I believe she's on. I, I'm not computer savvy, so I'm not like you guys that's focusing on the screen and you've got another little computer here that you're checking on who's on and who's not. So I'm not that adept. So, but uh, all my friends, I know there's some from Loreto, my ex Loreto girls are there. Warm welcome, hope to catch up soon. And thank you, Dr. T for playing our Levuka song. I was getting a little teary. I was about to reach for my box of tissues. I came handy because I kind of felt that I might need it and even brought my scarf if I ran out of tissues. <laughs> but that Levuka song, song certainly, you know, took me back to those very, very precious days of my education and upbringing mm. uh, uh, when, when I attended secondary school in Loreto. Maybe we'll get to talk about a little about that later. But, um, warm welcome to everyone. If you were here, I'd give you a hug, but uh, you know, for for for, turn, for tuning in, and nonetheless, I'll send you COVID-free hugs. How about that? So like a for you know your generosity and just being willing to come today and uh, share your story. Um, so many of my friends were messaging me. <clears throat> I noticed it was shared a lot by the Loreto uh, old scholars and. Uh, a few other women were asking me, where, where does she live and how, when will we see her? And so I reminded them and said, just join in uh, on, uh, on Tuesday at eight o'clock Fiji time. So I'm sure they're all listening in and we're looking forward to this wonderful Talanoa. So to kickstart our Talanoa tonight, uh, Florence, would you like just to tell us a little bit more about yourself, uh, your family uh, from your mom's side and your dad's side and where were you brought up uh, as a young girl? Okay, okay. All right, oh, that'll be a long story then. <laughs> well, I, look, I'm, I'm a kid from the West. I was born in Lotoka, 
And uh, later on, we moved, and I, I remember a lot of my upbringing uh, along the Coral Coast, sort of grew up in Singatoka there. Uh, so I grew up with um, two younger sisters and a younger brother. That's uh, Monica May and Liebling Pickering and my brother Barry Singh uh, in Brisbane. And um, so I went to uh, the primary school in Singatoka in Gerengeri, which is St. John of Arc. Um, Monica and Liebling and Barry also went there. And then I later had my, furthered my Catholic education uh, when I went to Loretto High School um, in Lebuka. But it, it was a great upbringing, uh, you know, growing up along the Coral Coast. Um, you know, we were very accustomed to nature. We lived in nature. Uh, you know, you could eat and sleep anywhere. You know, it was no big deal. You could sleep on the floor. You could sleep on the bus, you could eat on the bus, you could, you know, we were always at ease. That's uh, one of the things I remember about my childhood. Um, we were very free and um, didn't feel restricted. We just felt very comfortable wherever we were, we were very comfortable. We never felt the lack, we never felt we went without. We always had everything we wanted really. Um, and that became even more evident to me when I traveled abroad and then realized really what a blessing it was to be brought up the way we were. And even with as little as we had, it's, it was really quite a profound um, distinction for me to make much later in life. Uh, well, and uh, you mentioned St. John of Arc uh, School in Sigatoka. What was your memory of going to that particular school? Oh, yeah, St. John of Arc. Uh, we were brought up, of course, taught by the nuns. Um, it, it, it was fun. It, it was great. There was really no pressure, uh, you know, to do anything, to, to be top of the class. You know, we just had a good education, a very good balanced education. They were strict. The sisters were strict. Um, you know, we knew our place. You know, it was important. Uh, we were also brought up to know your place. That's an important thing that I learned, knowing your place. Um, you know, apart from the academic education, the sisters kind of took it upon themselves to teach us about other things, about how to get on in life. They taught us manners. They taught us about our behavior. So, uh, you know, what you do and you don't do. And if you didn't, you went and sat in the corner or sister will come in. Sister Flavia was the one that would come and give us a nice big kiwi like this, and pull your ear, that sort of thing. And, you know, she'll soon get the message across to you <laughs> that you did something wrong. But like I remember, we'd be playing netball on the netball court and then sister would walk past with just an exercise book. And like five of us will run off the netball court. The game will stop just to go and help offer to help sister to carry her exercise book. One exercise book five of us would just run off the court. So that's how we were brought up. We wanted to help the uh, you know, great education, I, I reckon. And I'm really pleased to have had that. <laughs> Beautiful. So there's a couple of, uh, I think, uh, comments coming through with memories, especially of, uh, uh, of uh, St. John of Arc uh, School. And what about when you went to Loreto? Uh, was there other schools you had in mind or was there a choice by your parents? Yeah, it was mum's choice largely. Uh, you know, she wanted me to go to a Catholic girls school and she wasn't too fond of me going to the city in Suva. St. Joseph was also an option. But she said, no, I think I just want you to go and go to boarding school. She just wanted to make sure that I didn't get up to any mischief or anything like that, I think. So, <laughs> so I think she felt safe that I was in a boarding school and be, you know, watched 24 seven sort of thing. Um, but it, it wasn't the school that I really wanted to because it didn't have the subjects I wanted. I really wanted to go to a school that had science subjects because I wanted to be a doctor. That was my ambition. Um, but my mom said, no, you're going to go to Loreto. Uh, it's a good school. And she was right. It is a good school. Was, it is and was a good school. Uh, it had art subjects. It didn't have, they weren't too good on the science subjects. So I didn't have much of a choice there. That was what I was told to do. And, you know, back in the day, you do as you're told. Yeah. Oh, yes. So it's interesting. You mentioned that you wanted to be a doctor. What inspired you? To, to go into medicine at, at that age? Yeah, 
I don't know. <laughs> I just, I, I think being the eldest in my family, I kind of took on the role of, you know, being the next person that nurtures the, the little ones, the younger ones, other than mum and dad. So, um, yeah, I don't know, really don't have an answer. I just, it just felt it. I just wanted to be a doctor. Maybe it was, yeah. 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 So well, well, that's true. You know, my dad being a pharmacist also, so that leaning probably came from there. I kind of remember him when I was, uh, when, when he was still alive, obviously, and I was just a little girl. He had a pharmacy in Lotoka and he'd have all behind him on the shelves, he'd have all these big dark jars of all his medicines and he'd to teach me to count and things like that. So he'd be working away with his mortar and pestle. Back in those days, the pharmacists actually could dispense medicine. They could actually mix the medicine. They didn't just give you something that came from a pharmaceutical company. Um, so he'd say, okay, behind there, the jar count number five from the left. So I'd have to climb up on the shelf behind me and count number five, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay, give me that one. So I kind of had those really lovely memories with him. And then he'll say, okay, go back. And then, you know, give me jar number eight. There's a whole, you know, shelf right behind me. There might've been about 20, 25 of them. So yeah, I sort of remember. So maybe some of that came from, and also back in the day, the pharmacists were like doctors, like I said, they could prescribe. There would be people that would, could not get to see a doctor if there was not one available, would come to the pharmacist and you know, tell them what their problem was. The pharmacist would actually dispense the prescription. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that was good. Uh, uh, Philadelphia. Yeah, you mentioned about, about yeah. it. So, uh, so for the Remember. girls, what were your memories? Uh, you know, did you hear any of these stories that mom was sharing about schooling at that age when uh, mom was young, Philadelphia? Anything you remembered? Yeah, I think uh, talking about um, like going to like being able to walk along the beach on lunch breaks or maybe on the weekend or something like that and you know, collect hippies or just have fresh kina. Wow. And it's so foreign to, <laughs> but we, like I didn't have that same upbringing. So I, it's, but, you know, just on the weekends, we wanted to, you know, get some junk food or something, get some Maccas, get some Dora. <laughs> They're very different growing up. She talk, and she talks so fondly about it too. I'm like, really? Okay. Yeah, I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, with like, with yeah. like sharing that memory, yeah? Um, yeah, I, re I remember those days. Um, you know, we'd go to the beach um, and you know, the idea is to go and catch some fish and tavu it. Yeah. So we'd boil some tavioca on dalo and take it to the beach. And, you know, if we caught fish, whatever those undersized fish that we should have put back in the ocean, <laughs> but, you know, we caught it and ate it nonetheless. And, uh, you know, that was it. That was lunch. We were very, like I said, we were very comfortable in nature. You knew how to make a fire real quick. You just find some coconut husk and, wow. you know, sticks and, you know, and, you know, you got your fire to cook tavu your fish. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was a great upbringing. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so nice. yeah I, I remember you, I remember, um, you post yeah no I I I just I thought it was funny when mum said that you know Nana probably you know sent her over there to boarding school because she'd get up to less mischief but um I've heard that there was some mischief so uh, <laughs> <laughs> at least oh. I remember <laughs> So I just remember, um, I remember, I think one time, I, I don't know, it was one of the aunties or maybe you posted mom a photo of you when you're at boarding school, when the a photo that you would have taken on the weekend, there's like one photographer in the town there and they took a photo of you and you were in your, I think you were in your uniform, but your skirt was probably not at the length that it was supposed to be at. No. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Those are the days. Okay, that was called a free Sunday day. So because we were I in boarding school, free Sunday. You, yeah, <laughs> yes. Sunday after mass, you could tombale to Levuka, right? Ah. So we lived for Sunday. So we'd go, and then there was a studio in Levuka. It's only one studio, so it was just oh. full of us, full of us Loreto girls lining up to go in and get photos taken in our dresses that are like oh. the hem is about like four inches above the knee or more. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> so 
scandalous. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> wow. that was just, no, no, that was just for the photo. Once we came out of the studio, the hair yeah. dropped. <laughs> <laughs> It goes below the knee straight away. Yeah. <laughs> wow. These are all those memories of Levuka. So you walk to Levuka and you walk back yeah. to Loret? Oh, yeah. Tombale. We didn't have money to catch the yes. bus. It was all, we always Tombale. Always walk. And then walking along the seawall, if we felt hungry, then yeah. we crack open a what coconut. Crack, up, crack open a coconut along the seawall there. Or Tandruku. Tandruku on the rocks. Yeah. Get the tandruku to have with your coconut or whatever else we found on the rocks. It was great. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> it was healthy. Let's put it that way. So forget <laughs> junk food. <laughs> Organic. People might think that was junk food, but it was healthy actually. Yeah, dear Saranga. So when you're walking as a group, you just uh, talanoa, as you can walk along or sing. Yeah. What do you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just walk talanoa. You know, all right, where we're going to have a step, stop for a you know, boo, you know, crack open a coconut. So, yeah, so you'd find a whole coconut. So what do you do? You just smash it on the rocks. It might take a while to do it. Yes, yeah, smash it. Okay, smash it. Like you didn't have a knife or anything. Then once you got the husk off, then you got left with the, the coconut shell. So what do you do with the shell? Get a stone or something and then so that you can save the juice, right? The stone, yeah, right. And then drink the juice up. Crack the coconut, look for some tandruku, and then that's it. Yeah. yeah, and munch it on the way, on the way back. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so what beautiful memories. Uh, what are the memories you had at Loreto? Uh, did you guys have like yeah. concerts sometimes during the year? We did. We uh, like Saturday night was our social night. So we tried to have something. We tried to do some sort of performance, uh, you know, some choir would get together and sing something um yeah or we might have our version of the social so we were a girls only school and the wadi was the boys school so every once in a while maybe once a term we'd have a get together and we'd have a you know dance so kind of evening yeah. so in the meantime we'd practice our moves on a saturday night just for the girls and i'm sure the boys were doing the same thing <laughs> Yeah, so we just sort of learn a few things, learn a few steps and, you know, listen to what music was, you know, was good to dance to, that sort of thing. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty relaxed. Yeah. Uh, so how many years were you there in total? Was it four <laughs> years? In uh, I had, I, I, we, uh, well, three years uh, three. in Loreto and then Loreto closed and then it became co-ed with the Wadi. So then uh, we moved over to the Wadi and then we joined in with the boys. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> and you still took uh, art subjects eh, when you were there? Yeah, it was just all arts. Yeah. Right. Wow. That's wonderful. I'll share here a picture of, uh, of dad. Um, and this is the picture here. Um, yeah. Would you like to share a little bit uh, about this picture? Yeah. Uh, Florence? Yeah. That's, 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 my, let's just say this is my biological father because my mom remarried later. And so I have a stepdad, which is where Monica and Liebling and Barry have come from. So I'm the, I'm the only child uh, from Clarence Angles and Adams. Um, and that picture there shows that he was the mayor of Lotoka at the time the queen visited. So that's him visiting. Um, he was originally sent out from New Zealand, he was seconded to come up and set up the first pharmacies in the hospital. So way back then when the hospitals were being set up, they didn't have a locally trained pharmacist. So that was when my dad was seconded, seconded to come out and start the pharmacies, which he did. And then he later branched out to have his own pharmacies in Lotoka and in Nandi. Mm. Yeah. And what was the name of the pharmacy? Do you remember the one in Lotoka? No, I, I think they oh. just refer to it as Adam's Pharmacy. Oh, Adam's Pharmacy. Yeah. Adam's Pharmacy. Wow. Yes. You know, these are really good history points. Eh? And I'm sure uh, those yeah. who are connecting in from Lotoka or from uh, uh, Nandi um, mm. may remember, may have some memories of the pharmacy. Yeah. Wow. Mm. And this, I think, was Philadelphia. Yeah, you mentioned about the, the science 
aspect of what mom wanted to do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So that connection to medicine. Mm. Wow. Yes. So we're not, we're not available for, um, yeah, yeah. for sharing that, uh, that he's, memory. He's my yeah, yard the, as well. What's that, Clorinda? I was just saying it's my yada as well. That's my my namesake. Oh, Clarence. That's, right. that's where Clorinda comes from. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, Clarence, so Clarence. And, and then Nana. Nana oh. was Linda. So that's oh. mom's mom. Oh. Yeah, so Clarence and Linda became Clarinda. Clarinda. Ah, the talk. Mm -hmm. See, so there's a story to your name there, Clarinda. <laughs> no wonder it's so yeah. unique, you know? It's really hard to find uh, right. you know, Clorindas in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I haven't met one yet. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. So this is a good memory, yeah, that connected mm -hmm. you to your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. so, Mom, can nice. you, tell, you tell a story about uh, your dad and uh, trying to get the road fixed, that main road? What oh. you did? Yeah. Oh, why don't you tell the story? <laughs> oh, Clarinda can tell the story. I'm not a good storyteller. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so well, we can all tell it if we miss any, if I miss any details. Um, so basically, there's yeah. an angry road going through Matoka. Uh, had a lot of big uh, potholes in it that needed to be fixed. And he was the mayor at the time, but I think he needed uh, the financing or he needed a bigger budget or something like that right. um, from the, the people above him and um, they were not like, responding to him or um, you know giving him the clearance for that to get these to get this road fixed so then um, one day after, after being fed up with uh, trying and trying and trying and getting over it, he uh, went to the road to one of the potholes and he uh, um, got one of the uh, firemen or something to open the hydrants on the street to fill up this pothole with water because it was like really big. Filled it up with water and then put like a bunch of rubber duckies into the <laughs> this big pothole of water. And then all these kids were surrounding it going, oh, look at the rubber duckies and playing with it. And he, he also, he had a friend who worked at the paper come and take photos of it to put in the paper to show everybody and see how what a big embarrassment this is to have these dangerous problems <laughs> with <laughs> rubber duck and taking a bath. And <laughs> it was a big embarrassment. So we finally got the funding to fix the roads because there was no fighting. Yeah. Oh. Favorite story. Yeah. Very ways. creative, very creative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, it's very good you remember that uh, Philadelphia and connecting uh, back to Lotoka. You never know, there will be some engineers who may be listening. Um, maybe kind of <laughs> take a little note from that, mm -hmm. <laughs> especially you know, when you're trying to get approval for budgets. You know, sometimes it takes months, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, you just need to get things happen. So, Vinaka, Vinaka for sharing that. Um, so now from uh, Loreto, we went to Lotoka, and now to um, your participation in the Hibiscus Festival. Uh, what memories do you have uh, of maybe being approached? How did it, how did it work uh, for you, Florence, uh, in relation okay. to the Hibiscus? Yeah. Huh. Um, well, actually, I was approached by Ambi. Now, Ambi was a skincare company. Uh, in Fiji back at the time. So Ambi approached me and said, you know, would you like to be a contestant for Hibiscus? And I said, yeah, sure. Like we all knew why we wanted to join. It's like $500 for your wardrobe. Like who, which young woman wouldn't want $500 to go do your wardrobe? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, and a week off work, you know, with full pay possibly. Um, so I said, great, yeah, all right, let me do the right thing and go and approach my boss and see what he says. So I went and spoke to him and my general manager at the time was Ken Oates. And he said, you going for Ambi? No such thing. You can tell them, no, you're going for Travelodge. That's it. Oh, 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 I wasn't too happy about that because I thought, well, why didn't they offer to sponsor me in the first place, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, I don't have a choice here. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
so that's what happened and I you know uh, became Miss Travelodge to start off with for Miss Hibiscus and then uh, you know the week rolled on and um, it was quite a hectic week for me because there were a lot of functions that you could go to um, that I didn't oh yeah that's that's me at the desk at Travelodge when I was working wow <laughs> that's lovely um yeah and uh, you know, a lot of it i wouldn't attend because you know ken oates our general manager was a workhorse and he went like yeah you can go to some of the functions but you know we're short staffed and blah 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 and you're gonna need to work some of it so i went into it like okay fair enough you know at least i'm in i don't get to go to all the functions that i probably that i should be going to because i'm expected to be there but you know you make the best of the worst situation and I just continued to work and go to definitely the public judgings, which was one public, uh, two public judgings and a private judging. And some of the other functions that I went to that uh, didn't clash with my work hours. So that was my hibiscus week for me. Um, roll around to the end of the day, which end of the week, which is Saturday. I worked in the morning and then I rushed off to the floats procession. And then I rushed back after the floats procession and then went back to work and then got ready for the evening session. And that's where I'm, you know, thankful having my little sister Monica there to help me get dressed and make sure that, you know, we don't have any faulty wardrobe incidents, get me all dressed and make sure I, <laughs> I get off on time because uh, my dress was not quite ready to. So I think Monica did a little bit of, you know, a little bit of magic there. Uh, to get my dress to get you know keep in place so that was really good and then that was it and so we went off to the crowning and you know um all my ducks lined up and i was the lucky one that got picked and i say that with great humility because and gratitude because you know have another set of 12 judges and it could be a completely different result that's right could have been completely so I accepted that win with a lot of humility and gratitude and, uh, you know, respect with the other girls who were really all very lovely all during the week. We, there was no real sense of competition there. We just enjoyed whatever time we had together. It was a very new experience for us. Uh, we were meeting people that we'd never met before because we, you know, go cocktails here and dinner there and um, you know, you're meeting people that you ordinarily wouldn't meet in your normal day of life. Some of them already knew, because, fortunately for me, because where I worked at Travel Lodge was usually a haunting ground or drinking ground for a lot of these people. So I kind of got to know some of them beforehand, but uh, it was just beautiful, beautiful. I love it. Love everything about my bringing in Fiji. I can't talk about it enough. Uh, to people who were keen about Fiji and want to know how I grew up and what it was like and the culture, the mix, the races, how we work together. Yeah. <laughs> and looking at the dress you were wearing, uh, like on this very evening, I'm looking at Monica's uh, <laughs> comments. <laughs> she's, she's saying last minute yeah, stitching and a pins to hold it together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, and uh, what decision did you make to what did you have different dresses to wear or how did you decide that this is the one to wear for this evening? I, I well, number one, I love purple. It's my color. I'm not wearing purple today, but I brought my purple scarf. <laughs> wow. It's my favorite color, purple. Um, I, I just love the off the shoulder. I just wanted something very feminine. Um, because I'm not often femininely dressed, uh, yeah. working as a duty manager at the travel lodge at that time, it's very much a masculine role. And you, you know, you walk, work, and walk and talk. You know, maybe wow. with a little bit of authority, maybe like a man does. Mm -hmm. um, so I just look for all my dresses that I wore for all the events. I wanted them to be as feminine and different because I wanted to enjoy wearing the dresses that. Uh, you know, we were advised, we were given a kind of set of guidelines, the daytime, we'd like you to wear something like this, for the evening, we'd want you to wear something like that. So, um, yeah, so that was it. And I, I just love the soft, soft frills. It's, 
you know, it's lovely. I, I look at this picture every now and then and I go, wow, that dress was beautiful. It's a beautiful wow. dress. And, you know, I hope to be able to recreate it again someday. I mean, even I look at the choker with that thing, you know, it looks yes. so outdated and out of fashion. Yeah. But I'd wear it today. I love it. And I don't care who doesn't like it or who thinks it's out of vogue. I will wear it today again if I had to. If an Absolutely. occasion arose, if an occasion arose, I would pick the same silver dress, get a tailor to do that for me, and I would wear that choker. It's beautiful. I love it. Wow. <laughs> it's me. Wow. Um, Clarinda and Philadelphia, uh, what do you think of mom's dress? Clarinda? <clears throat> oh, go gorgeous. Yeah, I didn't actually know all of this. Backstory. Thank you, Dr. T, for asking all these questions because <laughs> there's so much detail here I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah no it's beautiful i i would wear that i would that choker is be i would wear that now that's it's gorgeous yeah philadelphia yeah, yeah no, it's beautiful I, I, I like the choker and um I, if, now that we're talking about now that we're talking about the dress i remember a story about um mom's i remember you saying that somebody in the, the miss like this, this organization it might have been one of the judges or something came up to you so the day before they uh, proud you Miss Hibiscus and asked you what color you were going to Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. that? Yeah, if, if you go back to one of the pictures of all of us together, yes. I think it was I think it was Iqbal Janif. Yeah, can you see the guy yes. in purple? Yeah, he was he's the, the president. Yeah, he was the president of the Fiji Hibiscus. Oh, yeah. Wow. So yeah, okay. didn't dawn on me. <laughs> didn't dawn on me. <laughs> the day before, yeah. Yeah. You wanted to be. You want to be Kalamata, yeah. Wow. He knew you were gonna win. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. He, he bet on you, and wow, <laughs> that is beautiful. Now, Florence, do you remember uh, the lady sitting next to you with the in the white dress, the first runner up? I think that's Litiana. Um, during Balavu, maybe I hope. Gee, I hope I get the names right. I'm just yeah. so hopeless. I names. think uh, Viliame Wangalevi just com uh, just confirmed. Um, that, during that during Balavu, yes. Yes. yes, she was Miss Charity, so she she was the lady that raised the most money for charity. So we have two things going here. We have the Miss Hibiscus, which is based on how you performed. Yeah, in public, how you answered questions and, you know, yes. in the judgings, yeah. And a Miss Charity is the one who's raised the most money um, nice. during, the, during the week. She raised a lot of money. I forget now who she was sponsored by, but she raised, she raised quite an impressive amount of money, whoever wow. sponsored her, and I don't remember. <laughs> it's interesting because yeah. she's Miss Charity <clears throat> and first run-up, so she got two awards, right? Yeah, mm. yeah. Wow. That is amazing. And think and speaking about your dress, so you chose purple for the crowning. Uh, what about your dresses during the week? Uh, who was the one? Who was your seamstress? Was it Monica? Yeah. Uh, no, I had another lady uh, who was the. Yeah, she did all of my wardrobe for the whole week. I forget her name. Beautiful woman. Um, you know. Yeah. I think she might. I think she was maybe sewing for maybe another two. She was very well. Um, you know recommended she might have been doing for another two girls as well it might have been three of us yeah <laughs> forget her name uh, i just got some update uh, florence that uh, miss litiana was sponsored by burns film burns film oh yeah could be could be so she yeah. was miss oh, BT. that's nice oh nice yeah. nice so yeah. there's some uh, information shared here yeah yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you yeah wow that is got so nice check is in the comments very yeah. good. and monica says that she was the backup seamstress yeah <laughs> thank you yeah. monica <laughs> yeah wow that is beautiful yeah. and in terms of your dress during the week do you remember having different colors and themes for mm -hmm. uh, like what, what was the week like maybe i should ask that what was the week yeah. like? yeah yeah um, okay, we'll start off with the judgings. There were two public judgings held in, I can't remember, one, a theater um, in Suva there. Uh, so yeah, we were told, we were told you'd have to wear something long. So you're told whether you wear a long oh, nice. evening gown or during the day, uh, you know, a short, uh, short dress or something like that. Um, so you'd be given guidelines uh, to follow, which is good. 
And I, I think we all did pretty well. Nobody came out, came in with anything wow. outrageous. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that is amazing. <clears throat> and in terms of public judging, were the ladies like get um, sort of kind of some sort of training behind the scene or was there someone that was helping you? Uh, the members of the committee were very good. Um, mm. Obviously they've had experience before having worked on other previous festivals, previous years. And they kind of gave us an idea of the sort of questions that might be asked during a public judging mm -hmm. and some that might be asked during a private judging. Um, and, you know, you hope to get the answer right. And if you didn't, well, you just hope to give an impressive answer. Let's put it that way. If you didn't know the answer, you just have mm -hmm. to be, you know, I know it's cliched. You just have to be yourself. You can't put on a show because it'll show if you're trying to put on an act. You've just got to be yourself. And if you don't know the answer, you say you don't know the answer and you offer the next best answer that you can give. Wow. I think they just want to know, basically, they know that they could ask you anything and they know that you might not know anything about it. They just want to see how intelligent you are because you are going to represent your country abroad. You are going to be asked all sorts of questions about anything and they just want to see, can you answer intelligently? That's really the basis of asking those questions in public and in private. Wow. It's not to know how much you know, it's to know how can you navigate around something you don't know. Absolutely. And uh, what, what was the prize? So you mentioned that you travel overseas. What was sort of the package, if you remember, uh, in terms of your win that year? Yeah, I traveled to Los Angeles. I uh, had to do some work there with trying to promote Fiji with the Fiji Visitors Bureau at that mm -hmm. time, based there. Uh, and then I also went to New Caledonia for the, uh, for the Miss New Caledonia pageant. Mm -hmm. So I was a judge on that. And then there's also the other local, um, the other local um, civic duties mm -hmm. in Suva where you'd go to schools and hospitals and things like that. I, I loved working with the little children. I loved when the children, during the week, seeing the little children uh, come from the outer islands and it's their first trip to Suva. They came because it was hibiscus. It's a big thing. <laughs> it was a big thing. And I just loved interacting with them, uh, either in the hospital, because it was our first drive after the crowning. You'd go to the hospital, drive through the city and you'd go to the hospital and go to the children's ward to meet the children. And I really love, you know, the children. They were all excited. They didn't want to sleep because they knew the girls were coming. <laughs> um, and just during the day, um, you know, during the float procession, before I got on the float, you'd have all the children lined up along the side um, of the road. And just talking, um, I got to talk to some of the children, how, how I found out that they'd come from, you know, the outer islands. And it was lovely because you, you could just see the excitement in their eyes, you could see that they're going to go back inspired by something, something that they've never seen or experienced before. And the light bulb's going to go, go on and they're going to go back with something that they can work with or dream towards or something. And I loved it. At that age, uh, the children at that age, I saw that. It was beautiful. Wow. Just talking to them on the side there. <laughs> yeah. So, wow, that was beautiful, you know, that you took the time to, you know, to talk to them. And uh, as you said, that would have really impacted uh, on them, you know, knowing that, you know, they've spoken to you. And then eventually after that was the announcing. What was your reaction like? Did you have any um, sort of uh, inkling that the choice was coming to you or you had no idea, Florence? No, I, I really, I didn't didn't think I was going to win. We were told to prepare your speeches beforehand in case you win. I didn't. Not because I thought I was a smarty pants and can come up with something on the spot. No, I just didn't think I was going to need to. Uh, quite apart from the fact that I felt a little disappointed that I wasn't able to go to all the functions that everybody else went to because I had to work. I, you know, I was supposed to consider myself lucky that I acted with my boss said, you know, you're lucky we sponsored you, you know, you know, whatever. I said, well, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, Ambie wanted to sponsor me in the first place. But, you know, I, I kind of felt a bit disappointed that I wasn't able to go and, you know, enjoy 
the you know the thing with the fun oh the one that i missed out one is um we would go on board one of the the, the boats would come in one of the um, the navy the cocktail yes. on the navy the girls all looked forward to that because the sailors are there right <laughs> <laughs> they wanted to go and meet the sailors you know yeah okay. so i, I didn't I go to that, that one so <laughs> Hey? I'm, married. I'm married. I'm married to a sailor. So I'll oh. speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So I didn't. Yeah, I was a bit disappointed. I didn't do that. And there was another one. There was a morning tea at the military camp, and I missed that one as well. And went like, damn, I missed that one. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it was okay. I'd hear all the stories later. It's all all the jokes and all of that come back and. Uh, who's got an eye on who and who chatted to who, you know, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> wow. Good, good gossip. Let's put it that way. Good, yeah, healthy good gossip. gossip. <laughs> <laughs> Kakasi. <laughs> wow. I'm so glad. Well, it's good to still hear you. Uh, you some Bosnakaviti, Tombale, Nakakasi, all those things that you remember. <laughs> Um, yeah. So what, what is happening in this picture here, uh, Rory? <clears throat> okay, so this, when I was Miss Hibiscus in 1977, that was the 21st anniversary of the Hibiscus Festival. Wow. So, so, we, so it was a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a big thing. We celebrated 21 years. So the, the lady uh, on the other side of me is Liebling Marlow. She was the first Miss Hibiscus back in oh, 21 years before, whatever that was. Um, so she was there for the celebration. So that was the big 21st anniversary cake. Yeah, so 21 years, that was pretty good. Wow. Yeah. So wow, that must be yeah, quite historic uh, to be you know, in the same space as Liebling Malo. Did you know a little bit about her too? Uh, I hadn't met her till then. I, I hadn't see. met her till then, yeah. Wow. But um, she had she had lots of lovely stories to share from her mm. first year of uh, hibiscus and um, wow. other queens, other the other Miss Hibiscuses were there from the previous years because it was a big twenty first year anniversary. So as many as we could get come uh, for that evening mm. uh, were also in attendance. It was good. Wow. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I think uh, one information coming through, Vinaka Luke, uh, Miss Liebling Malo, Miss Hibiscus, 1956. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this you was- some, You got some detectives on your team, Dr. T. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good team I have here, all the information coming through. Yes, Vinaka, Vinaka Wakalevu for those co connecting in. And also Salote Veribalu, Naka Salote just mentioned that one of the theaters is the Phoenix Theater, where, okay. where you may have been one of the judging. The judging, so, yeah. yeah. Oh, so wow. interesting. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm, impressed. I'm impressed with these people's memory. <laughs> I can't even remember yes. the name of the theater. <laughs> yeah, well, just to wonderful. go back through the comments, there's a, there's a lot going on in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is wonderful. It'll be fun to read that. Clarinda. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. Uh, 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 mentions, uh, you were talking about travel you know, um, Marlon Brando. Can you speak on Marlon Brando? Was that before or after Miss Hibiscus? Was it after? Right. After. After. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about Marlon Brando. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Um, look, I mean, we have often have a lot of celebrities come to Suva. Yeah. And I guess a Suva Travel Lodge was probably the premier hotel to stay in at the time. Yeah. So Marlon Brando came and visited for a few days on his way to Tahiti. He was actually going to Tahiti. So I was asked to take him shopping uh, to oh. Suva. So, so I took him downtown. We went through a couple of shops and he was after a particular type of Oh, particular type of material. I forget the type of material he was after that could e could be easily ascertained in Suva and at a reasonable price. He said, oh, it's very expensive everywhere in the world. I come here because I can get it at a good price. Yes. 
I've forgotten what type of material it was. But anyway, he, he took me shopping and uh, I took him shopping and he was really helpful. Asked me lots of weird questions, like out of the blue. I really got a taste of like why they want a good representative to represent your country because you don't know what you're going to get asked. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then he, the shopping, we shopping was over and he took me shopping and he said, I want to get you a gift. So he bought me some beautiful perfume really expensive french perfume oh wow last me a long while i used it sparingly i and i kept the bottle for years I, afterwards. i, I remember I mean, it <laughs> yeah. yeah i remember you still had it that bottle still, yeah i still still, and I still, still little smell spritz, it. <laughs> one spritz every month <laughs> how did dad feel about you having this <laughs> That's a good question, Claire. No comment. So what did Dad think? No comment. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So Florence, mm. in terms of your win, what was the reaction of mom and the family um, when your name was announced? Uh, mom wasn't there. Um, she was, I think, in Tavu at that time. Uh, we had moved from Singatoka to Tavu. I'm pretty sure mom was in Tavu at that time. When they yeah, they, they were wrapped like they, they would just decide themselves. Uh, so was I, uh, shocked, like I said, didn't go, didn't prepare any speech, thinking like, no, nah, don't think so, don't think I'll be needing to say anything. So, you know, <laughs> so uh, the grace of God maybe gave me some words to say that, uh, you, know, you know, came across reasonably um, competent to be able to get up and talk <laughs> anywhere, anytime, I think. So it was a good experience uh, being thrown on your feet too. You know, sometimes you're thrown on your feet and you're, you're on your feet and you got to think real quick now, what do I say now? Yes. And that was a good experience for me. Because, wow. you know, there's thousands of people in Albert Park and you better sound good. <laughs> they just clapped for you. <laughs> they just applauded you. And then if you mm -hmm. don't and sound intelligent <laughs> after that. <laughs> He'll be asking for a refund. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure you were very, you know, you sounded so articulate and I'm sure, you know, anything, um, the, the judges knew what they were doing, I'm sure. And, and I could feel how you felt, you know, when you were missed quite a number of events. No wonder you didn't have any speeches prepared. Yeah, yeah. That's my boss, Ken Oates, the workhorse. Yeah, you wanted to drain every bit of blood out of me to work. <laughs> he wanted to get his money's worth. Because <laughs> I did get full pay that week, even though I missed, I had to go, you know, some stuff. But he was good in the end. Yeah. He got more than his money's <laughs> worth with all the, all the exposure that Travelodge got. <laughs> yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Did the team in the Travelodge, did they do something for you, maybe a, a morning tea or lunch, if you still remember, going back to 1977. I know it's a long I, time ago. I, but... I, I think we had a morning tea or something like that. Yeah, it was a morning tea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was a great memory. I remembered, I mean, like I said, you didn't expect, I didn't expect to win. And when they did announce it, I remember our switchboard operator, a, po a polar, he, when he heard the announcement, he just went straight on the microphone and yelled it out. Everybody, this is the public address system for all of Super Travel Lodge, right? Everybody, Miss Hibiscus is Florence Juliet. And he started clapping, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it was crazy. Like everybody was, yeah. <laughs> and then when then the float oh. procession came out, we had the staff, some of the staff from Travel Lodge run out on the road to try and stop the float so that I could get off the float and come into the hotel. And they wouldn't allow it, of course. It's like, no, <laughs> no that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, crazy people I work with. I love them to bits. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Yeah. And I'm that's sure Fiji. That's what we love about Fiji. We're exactly. spontaneous. Yeah. We just do what we feel like. That's it. Yeah. Wow. Love Fiji. Uh, so mm -hmm. Philadelphia and Clarinda, any question would you like to ask mom <clears throat> for any specific, you know, uh, memory of her reign as Miss Hibiscus? Go. I didn't know that you went to New Caledonia. 
for LA. Uh, as, uh, I, I, I remember that. I thought you went to Hawaii. Is Hawaii oh, yeah, on route. On route to Los Angeles, I went to Hawaii. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. Wow. Um, actually, there's a request in the comments for you to talk about um, teaching, uh, uh, teaching at catering school. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Is that right, so? Miss um, uh, No, before hibiscus. Yeah. yeah. Right. I spent oh, uh, after okay. I finished my high school. Yes. Um, I had already had a an introduction to hospitality to tourism because <clears throat> growing up along the coral coast there in, in Singatoka, um, Monica and Liebling, my younger sister, and I. We would do the flow show at the Reef Hotel on a Saturday night. Sometimes we'd go do it at the Fijian Hotel, sometimes maybe as far as Korolevu Beach Resort. So I was 13 when I started really working in hospitality. And then, you know, when we weren't dancing at night, for example, on the weekends, then I might work behind the reception desk, you know, do a couple of shifts behind the reception desk. So when I finished high school, um, you know, I really wanted to study medicine, as I said, didn't have the subjects. And being the eldest, the um, uh, ex maybe not the word expectation, but I felt the obligation that I should do something to start work straight away so that I can help mm. mom and dad look after the younger ones. Mm. So I thought, well, I can start work. And then I think somebody at work suggested, you know, the hotel and catering schools just opened. If you mm. want to further your education, that'll be the place to go. So we were the first students to go through the hotel school. Uh, and then the first students to graduate. And so once we graduated, we were really, after being taught by the British expats in hospitality that came out to teach us at the hotel school, they wanted to localize the, pos the positions, the teaching positions straight away. So after I'd done my, served my contract with Travelodge, because they had paid, they'd paid for my scholarship to go through the hotel school for two years, I had to work back for Travelodge for two years. So once that was over, the hotel school was then ready to, um, you know, bring on board the locally trained graduates mm. who can then fill the positions that they held mm. in the teaching capacity. So that's why I was one of the few students that went back to the hotel school. Uh, one of, we were the first ones, first local ones to go back in a, and teach, um, teach, uh, students that were coming and we had lots coming tourism was thriving then there was a great need for the school uh, we couldn't get enough students out into the hotels they were always asking can we have so it was great for employment it was really good yeah so i spent eight years there so that was a long time long time uh, we trained a lot of people for hospitality a lot of our air pacific crew uh, flight crew came from the hotel school because you know they already had the basics yes yeah but about um this hypothesis did, did you have to was there a, a talent portion of the um the judging did you have to do any or was it just the speaking and the modeling what, what did you have to do yeah. No, no talent. No, like I didn't have to sing and dance or anything like that. Thank goodness. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, the, the, just the public judgings in the Phoenix Theatre. Now, now that I've been, uh, you know, yeah, reminded that it was the Phoenix Theatre. Uh, it's just the public questions. Um, you're called on stage and you're asked questions. And the same thing in a private judging. So it would be a cocktail evening scenario with dinner. Uh, and you'd mingle with the judges. Um, then there'd be a little bit of a breakout session. So we'd have the judges seated along around the, you know, the, the dinner part, dinner area. So mm. you'd sort of move around and go and have a chat to each judge. So they just have a little casual conversation with you, ask you a couple of general knowledge questions. <clears throat> what would you do if you were Miss Hibiscus? Um, what would you like to do if you, you know, had it within your power to do that sort of thing like I said they really weren't looking for the correct answer they just want to see how well you can speak if you know the answer great if, really, if you don't mm. how intelligently can you navigate around giving that answer wow. mm. 
I really think like it's, it wasn't a typical, they really were looking for representatives for the country, like the, to go out and advocate yeah. for, for Fiji. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do remember you, you sharing with us once, um, one of the questions, I think one of the like final questions, something to do with green and gold. No, that rings a bell, but I can't remember. <laughs> it rings a bell, but I can't remember. Fiji's, like what, what was Fiji's, what's Fiji's biggest industry or, some, or something to do with green and gold? What does the green oh. and gold mean or something? And you oh. were able to answer? Oh, I, I don't know. Remember. Yeah, I don't know. So it looks I'll, like I'll mom look. answered it, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. She answered it correctly one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, I don't know, but if I were asked that question today, I, I think for me, green would probably be something to do with either pine, the pine forest or sugarcane, like that's green and it's gold because it's bringing money into the economy. So that's probably maybe what they were asking yeah, for. And I can't like remember that. how I answered mm -hmm. and if, if there wasn't, if there was an answer, I would have given, that would have been the one I've just given, the one that I've just said. The green would be to do with the greenery, Pine trees, pine forest, uh, sugar cane, and which is gold for us. Mm. Yeah, sugar. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. And did you uh, continue your, uh, you know, friendship with some of the fellow contestants afterwards? After um, you won the uh, Miss Hibiscus, did you kind of maintain some connection with some of them? Um, Look, for a short while, I think after that, everybody's just traveled to all parts of the world. Yeah. <clears throat> and at that time, technology isn't as we have today, where everybody's just connected <laughs> with all technology. It's wonderful. So I think a lot, we've, I've lost touch with a lot of them, actually. So, wow. You mentioned, uh, was it Paula who was the one Paula. on the phone? Ola. He was the, yeah. he was our switchboard operator. Yeah. Yeah. Someone also made a comment. They actually know Paula. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like I think the <laughs> message that has come through that yeah he has passed on. So that's oh. a message uh, that oh. has come through. So it's nice oh, to see wow. the connection. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, lovely. Oh, he was yeah. lovely, Paula. He was beautiful. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia. Uncle Barry said that the green is the sugar cane and the gold is Papa Cola gold mine. Ah, <laughs> okay. Right. okay. Okay. Thank Someone you, Barry. <laughs> oh, nice, nice to hear you. Nice to know you're on. Uh, you're listening in, Barry. I didn't think you would, but I, I know Libling and Monica are on. But <laughs> thank you. Wow. That is beautiful. Now, when it came to 1978, did you have to have the honor of passing on your crown to the next queen? Yeah, I did. Uh, it's what happens every year. And the, the next year was Tanya Whiteside. Um, I think she was the Tiki Togs, sponsored by Tiki Togs. They make the most beautiful dresses that last forever. <laughs> I have a I had a dress that Clorinda now has inherited that's over 21. Oh, how many years old is that dress now, Clorinda? How old are you? That's how old that dress is. Right, actually. Yeah. Oh, she doesn't want to tell her age. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 30, yeah. 30, 30 something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. Yes, uh, man, look at all these uh, yeah, beautiful memories. So uh, also been told here that Paula is from Levukana in Vanumbalau. Yes, oh, uh, from Lao. Lovely. Vanumbala, oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful to hear uh, to hear the comments coming in that somebody knows Paula. Oh, yes, nice. Mm. Um, so, in terms of uh, looking at uh, you know the uh, the um, the hibiscus now, uh, I know because after that uh, you moved over to Australia. What was the transition from Fiji to Australia? From? Mm -hmm. So we moved to New Zealand. Um, in 1987, when Clorinda was born. Um, and then we were there for quite a number of years and then we moved over to Australia. So that was the, that was the route, New Zealand to Australia. Yes. Uh, and when you were there in Australia or New Zealand, were you kind of still 
um, like connect back to the hibiscus back home in Fiji. I know you have your the new country and the new family and the work. Mm -hmm. uh, do you still mm -hmm. get a chance to maybe uh, find out through the coconut wireless oh, about what's oh, happening yes. back home? Oh yes, you can't help it. You can't help but uh, <laughs> not do it. Yeah. Uh, look, with techno, with you know, with the websites and internet now, it's easy to you know check back and see how things are going and you know that they continue the festival continues to do the beautiful things that they do and you know good reason for that because festivals bring cheer they lift the mood in the city you know you're kind of going along humdrum humdrum you know you know nine to five work home work home and you don't get a chance to enjoy yourself and uh, yes. you know be challenged in the different ways and get to mix you know talking about the children that come from the outer islands i keep thinking of them and i'm going like you know Aww. if the festival exists just to bring these kids so their eyes will light up and they can see something different and be inspired by something different love it keep doing it for them um, and, uh, you know, it, like I said, it just lifts the mood. People are more relatable. Uh, they're more friendly. I mean, we are a friendly country. You walk downtown and you meet a stranger and you nod and you say, Mbula, Yandra, you know, mother, you know, it's a respectful, it's a beautiful, uh, you know, familial gesture. Like we're one family, we say hello and bye to each other. Um, and, you know, in the festival, just makes more of that and you make more friends you, you know it's just exponential it just goes on and on the benefits the more festivals the better it of course has its downside it's expensive i feel yeah. for the stall holders sometimes it costs them a lot of money to have a stall and i admire them and thank them because i tell you nothing beats walking through all the puddles in albert park <laughs> to go and get my <clears throat> tin fish curry and roti that's been cooked with coconut milk you know like lolo how you lolo the roti Tin fish curry and potato in that, the best. I'd walk through the puddle of water in Albert Park to go get that. You know, precious. <clears throat> and the smell of the food coming from all the stalls. It's just such an enjoyable experience. It's, you know, you get to talk to people that want to talk to you. Nobody's snobbish. Nobody's, you know, yeah. everybody wants to talk. Everybody wants to say hello, wants to chat. Yeah. Nah, not about that's the country level. that's the country we've come from and we should be so proud of yes. and uh, you know i take this with me <clears throat> here where i am and that's who i am and um you know i get i go far just by i, I open doors uh, where doors were closed um you know i reach hardened hearts when very stern decisions have been made i can warm those hearts and open those hearts because of what I brought with me from Fiji, because of this way of being we have, we mm. know our place. Yeah. We, we come from a place of humility and meaning. We have a lot of respect for each other. Mm. And I brought that with me from there. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, and I quickly saw the difference when we moved abroad. And this is the example I give, where I found that children are on first name basis with adults. Like little five-year-old kids are calling our neighbors, uh, hi, Peter, hi, Maggie. I'm going, yeah. oh, hey, we don't do, no, it's either Auntie, Auntie Maggie or Uncle Peter or Mr. Peter or Mrs. Maggie or something like that. You see, there's, there's a distance um, and it's a good thing. Uh, there's a hierarchy that exists whether you like it or not. And you need to know your place in that hierarchy in your family, uh, in your workplace, in your community, and if you know your place and you move from that place and you operate from that place uh, with humility and respect, you're going to go far. I've done it. I've proved it many times. I will hold that true to me. I pass that on for anybody who's looking for some little thing that they can do. Try that. It's a wonderful unbreaking that we've had from back home. And, um, you know, it, yeah, I, I don't know how we got onto the topic, but it's just it's something good. that I want to share yes. because I've seen it work. I, I brought it with me and I use it here and I open doors that where doors are shut. I turn, oh. I overturn decisions because I know my place and I know how to operate from that place. Um, 
and, and, and it's always been advantage, advantageous for me. I've always had a favorable outcome from that. Uh, it's humility, right? If I can use that word, it's humility. You operate from that place and you will, you know, <laughs> do marvelous things. Uh, beautiful, well said. Um, I'm going to pass it over to the girls, uh, Philadelphia and Clarinda. Um, what was it like? Uh, being connected to mom uh, as Miss Hibiscus, because I know it's going to be yeah, kind of connected to both of you, Philadelphia. Yeah. Um, for me, it was so interesting how, uh, how well known that uh, she is and how like, well known the, the Miss Hibiscus uh, pageant um, is in Fiji and um, what it like. What did it mean to the culture and like how popular that is? Um, and I see that in how many people remember. Uh, so, for example, 10 years ago, I went back to uh, visit Fiji. And when I was leaving, I was going through customs and immigration. Uh, the lady asked me for my passport. And um, my legal, my full legal name is Florence Philadelphia. So I have the same first name as my mum. And my last name is Julian Tivoli, which is my mom's last name and my dad's last name. So she looked at my passport, my name, and she looked at me, she looked at my passport, she looked at me again, and I said, is this, is everything okay? And she goes, oh yeah, everything's okay. It's just, you have the same name as Miss Hibiscus 1977. And I'm like, what? How do you remember that? How do you know that? Like, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And so, and I explained to her, yeah, that was my mom. And she started talking about my mom. She's like, oh, so beautiful. And she, I remember when she won, we were so excited. And wow, I, yeah, I didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, I keep being reminded of like, how much it meant to people. Wow. Um, but it also made me feel like, did nothing else happen in 1977? Like, <laughs> 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 That's oh, um, beautiful story. Yeah. I, have a, I have a similar story. Yeah, I have a similar story. So when I when I was 19, um, I moved back to Auckland. I went to University University of Auckland, and I was working. Um, on Queen Street at Max for any Auckland peeps who remember Max or well, Max is probably still around. Anyway, so I was working at, in retail on, at, at Max and the girl I worked with, and she was probably, um, she might have been maybe 10 or 15 years older than me. And I had mentioned it at some point it came up, you know, she, you know, Fiji people was, you know, where are you from? Who's your parents? You know, what's your last name? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, eventually find out that mum is Florence Julian. And she lost it. She was like, man, I had photos of your mum, like <laughs> posters of your mum around my bed when I was a kid. I wrote her fan mail. <laughs> like, like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it was such a, it was such a um yeah I think just I mean the, but there was so that's like that's one story of Seb like there are so many people we have met over the years who you know run into people and they find out who mum is and they're like wait this is 1977 I'm like how do you know like yeah what else happened in the clearly <laughs> nothing else happened in 1977 <laughs> everyone remembers mom. yeah so it was it was yeah it was um not coming, not being brought up in Fiji and not, we've never been to it. Me and Delhi have never been to a hibiscus festival. So we haven't kind of don't, yeah, have that understanding of just how significant it is, or at least was and, and what it means to people. And so running into, you know, it'd be at Flemington Market in Sydney and people would like, hey, this is 1930s. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it just happens so often. Wow. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, it, yeah, it, it always made us very curious, very fascinated by this whole hibiscus festival phenomenon. 
<laughs> yes, beautiful. Yeah, great stories and wonderful <laughs> memories, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's interesting yeah. hearing it from mom, but now it's interesting to hear it from you both, you know, on the impact of mom and the hibiscus, uh, you know, festival itself. That's great. And if I can add on to the fan mail, did you remember the fan mails, Florence? Um, uh, look, I remember getting them. I did. Oh, uh, it was nice. Uh, people just wanted to ask questions. Um, you know, it, it turned out I, you know, it was also a little bit of an agony aunt, like, you know, people had problems and they wanted to ask my advice. And I'm going like, oh, gee, I'm just 21 years old or 22 <laughs> years old. Like, what do I know? <laughs> okay. What's the, what? <laughs> I'd go around and ask other people that would know better than me and then I'd send a reply because I certainly didn't know anything about you know relationships I was just 21 you know I got married a little later you know uh, the it. year after sort of thing but yeah I was just surprised by the sort of questions that people would write in to ask they kind of thought you were the authority on everything which no it's not true <laughs> we don't know everything <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so in terms of the address, how did, did, they, did the fan mail come to your work or did it go, yeah? It came to Travelodge, yeah. They knew I miss ah, Travelodge, so yeah, just send it to Travelodge, yeah. Ah, wow, that's so beautiful. It, it was great. I mean, I was happy that I was in a position to be able to answer some questions and I treated it seriously. I didn't take it as a joke. I answered every, every letter that I got and I did the best I could, plus more. I tried to let this person know that it was well worth their effort to write in because I didn't want to discourage them from later in life not doing the same thing. They want to ask somebody else, another, you know, somebody else in authority. I didn't want them to be discouraged by, oh, these people don't answer your letters. Just don't bother. Like, no, I didn't want that to happen. So I wanted to not be the one that ruins it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or discourages anyone. Right. Yes. That's such a, a wonderful gesture, you know, uh, just for them to receive the letter. You yeah. know, it'll be interesting from this talab no, you never know, someone mm. listening yeah. in may have been yeah. one of those who wrote the letter. I will be so amazed <laughs> if someone, anyone out yeah. there who wrote a fan letter, fan mail to Florence, please yeah. contact me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 wanted, I wanted them to feel important enough to get a reply. Like, you know, they wrote to me. That's important. They deserve a reply. Yeah. <laughs> and that, I think, just shows uh, who you are as a person, uh, Florence. And we just want to, you know, acknowledge that, that, you know, you, you. You, you, know, you took that role, um, you know, very seriously and, uh, mm. you know, continue to represent Fiji. And yet, you know, the, um, the fan mails come in and you still take the time. And that is such mm. a wonderful gesture. Thank you. Um, now, mm -hmm. in terms of your life now in Sydney, uh, we know you've done some amazing uh, things recently. Would you like to share with our audience what you've been doing lately? Um, because it's just so encouraging. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um... All right, so I've kind of kept this to myself pretty much. Um, I'm at university, so I'm studying and have been for the last eight years. Um, when the girls grew up and left home and I thought like, you know, there's more to life than I certainly didn't want to be one of those ladies sitting home on a rocking chair, knitting booties and bonnets like uh, that's not me. I wanted to go to uni and further my education because I love learning. I love learning about new things. My girls, all of my children have had their education. So I was sort of uh, living, I lived very close to the university here in North Sydney. So I happened to be walking past one day and I saw it was open day. I thought, oh, nice, I'll go in and have a look. And I went in and they happened to be offering a degree course, a double degree in law and theology. And I went like, ah, oh, my two favorite subjects, my love subject is theology and law. Well, that would have been next, next second to, to being a doctor, right? I couldn't get to be a doctor. I didn't get the opportunity to go to law school, but this is it now. And I'll have no excuse because uh, kids are off my hands, um, have all the free time. So, but that was eight years ago. That's just how long it's taken me to do a double degree. I work full time. Uh, I work full time at nights uh, as a night manager 
um, and uh, I study during the day. So I did that so that I can study, have the days free to study. So it's just taken me that long. There have been times when like, you know what, I'm just not going to do this semester. I think I'm just going to, you know, take a break. So that's why it's taken so long. So because I'm still a student, two, year, two and a half years ago, I, I was having some health issues, not feeling too good. And I had a weight problem, it was 100 kilos back then. So I said, if I want to graduate in two and a half years later, and I, I want to be a smart lawyer and be able to think on my feet and you know, be really bright, know what I'm doing, to be, to be able to hack the long hours, I better do something to help me improve my health. Now, I'll preface that by saying, this is not to make anyone feel bad if they're 100 kilos. You are, you, only you are the judge of how good you feel in your body. And especially for us women coming from the islands where big is beautiful, right? And it's big is beautiful. You're the judge. You know, if you don't want to lose weight, that's your prerogative. You know how you feel in your body and nobody else can tell you, only you. So I just want to preface that so I don't um, make anyone feel inadequate or embarrassed. So yeah, 100 kilos and I thought I need to lose weight. So come now, two and a half years later, I've lost 25 kilos. And that's come because I go to the gym a lot. I train, I have the use of a personal trainer, which I value and highly recommend. And only a couple of weeks ago, there was a competition in the gym uh, between our Sydney gym and our Melbourne gym. And it was a wall sit challenge. See how long you can sit on the wall, do a wall sit. So it, was, it ran for two weeks and I, my trainer said, you should give it a go, Flo. And I went like, oh, I don't know. I said, yeah, come on, give it a go. It's all for good fun. All right, so I did my first wall sit and I was able to sit for a uh, wall sit for two minutes. So I thought, oh, it's not too bad. I'll just see how I go. And I just progressively, I'd come in twice a day and improve it by three minutes. So I might do two minutes in the morning, then I can wall sit five minutes in the afternoon. And so it progressed that way. So at the end of the two weeks uh, wall sit, um, I did 17 minutes on the Friday and the competition was ending on the Monday. So I remembered when I did the 17 minutes and I remember the gym supervisor who was monitoring it said, Florence, it's 17 minutes. It's just like he wanted me to stop because he couldn't stand to see the pain I was in. And he was feeling it for me, the poor guy. He was saying, Florence, it's 17 minutes. And it's funny because I felt I wasn't ready to stop. My body felt like it could go to 20. It's like my body said, I can take you to 20. But I thought, no, I'll do, I'm going to do 20 on the next day. So Monday, that's the Friday. Monday is the finals. So I went home on the weekend and I said, right, I didn't come this far. <laughs> Just really the competition thing got into me then. I didn't come this far to lose. I want to win this. Yeah. I didn't do 17 minutes for nothing. All this pain and sweat and all that. So I said to myself, right, you're just going to double it. I'm going to do 34 minutes for me. So when I come on Monday, I'm going to double it just because I, I want to know because I can, because I'm telling myself that I can do it and I'm going to do it. Five words, decide on it, do it. That's it. So I went home and I had to look, this, these things don't just happen on the spur of the moment. I had to work myself up to it. I had to think about how am I going to deal with the pain? So I had a few scenarios playing in my mind on how I would do it. So I thought, right, 34 minutes for me and for my gym, because well, we, it's a competition between Sydney and Melbourne, so that uh, Sydney will also win overall, I had to beat what Melbourne was doing. So the, the best that came out of Melbourne was 31 minutes wall sit. And I said, well, I'll just have to add 10 minutes to that. That's all there is to it. And fingers and toes crossed that that lady doesn't come back to improve on it. So on Monday, I turned up and I, once I'd reached the 34 minutes, I went like, yes, that was for me. I'd done 34 minutes for me, doubled it, nice. And then I had to go through to, you know, beat the Melbourne one so that uh, North Sydney will win. So as a result of that, I wall sat 42 minutes and 30 seconds. And it was hell, but you know, it was good. It, it was great. And on this occasion, we're doing it for the women. Women, we can achieve amazing things. You just, we just know where to go, where to reach to get whatever it is we need to pull it off. We just do. And it's been an interesting observation because 
I've gotten the reaction from both the men and the women. The women go like, wow, flow. Wow. But in the back of their mind, you know, they get it. They get it. But the men, completely different. Like, oh, how did you do it? Oh, 42 minutes. <laughs> you know, they, they're just freaking out. They just like can't stand the pain. And like they're walking past and I'm sitting in this wall sit and they can see, they can hear the man, the, the counting, you know, 30 minutes, 32. And they're going like, you know, they're just about in tears. The reaction from the men, yes. they can't handle it. That was an interesting observation for me because it just showed we women, we got it. On this Women's Day, Women's Celebration Day, I want to tell you, sisters, nothing you can't do if you don't apply it. Apply yourself. I surprised myself. I shocked myself. I told myself I was going to double 17 minutes to 34. I had no idea what I was talking about, completely clueless, but I just told myself, that's it. So come Monday morning, I just kicked myself out the door and say, now go do the deed. Don't come back until you've done it. That's how I spoke to myself. Kick my butt out the door. Out you go. Off you go. Go do it. Don't come home until you've done it. I'm not joking. That's what I said to myself. You needed to, I needed to work myself up in that way. Yeah. Oh, that is amazing. <laughs> wow. Congratulations. Congratulations for you know, you. achieving that win. And I really like the five words you use there. Decide on it. Do it. Yeah. Decide on it. Do it. Wow. Do it, yeah. That is just so, so inspiring. We have a number of women here uh, commenting and just so inspired. Uh, by mm. your words that you've shared to us now. Mm. And uh, it's just so encouraging, both on the fitness side, plus also mm. the academic achievement um, that you have reached. Um, so you have graduated um, uh, or you will be? This is my last year um, oh. because it's, it's a double degree. So I've completed all the law requirements. I'm just on my last year of theology. And then because it's a double, you can't graduate until you've got the two done. So, yeah. So that's it. So, you know, but look, you know, I'm in my mid 60s, Dr. T. And I tell everybody, you know, somebody made a flippant comment to me in the gym the other day. And said, you know, um, elderly people like you in your 60s, in the 60s. And I went like, stop right there. I'm not elderly. I'm not average. <laughs> I'm not ordinary. <laughs> yeah, and this is actually it was my it was my trainer he was kind of made a mistake of saying that to me and he and I said is that what is that what you passed your exams on that tick what, what's that textbook can you take the textbook and chuck it in the bin that doesn't work I'm not average I'm not normal I don't fit in those statistics actually I'm extraordinary and I know what I believe it because uh, if I don't tell myself that nobody else will and I would not have been able to continue with my studies because there were many times when I just wanted to drop out, just forget it, just go and relax and retire somewhere. But no, I kept going and I have no regrets. <laughs> it's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Women can do it. We can do it. We can do it. We can persist. We can soldier on. We can soldier on. The talk of a coward. Yeah, I love that. Uh, saying I am extraordinary yeah so mm -hmm. I think these are some of the mantras that we have to say to ourselves right because as you mm -hmm. said if you don't say it to yourself who else will yeah. only you, you have the wow yeah Woo. if I can just use one other that I use uh, it's a scripture actually and it talks about uh, you being fearlessly and wonderfully made I think it's in mm, psalm somewhere I'm not sure I'm fearlessly and wonderfully made. And I, I, look, I look that up a lot and I go, you know, I'm fearless. I'm fearless. There's nothing I can't do without coming out unscathed. And if I am, I'm going to come out with the least painful consequence. But maybe, maybe I get into some kind of stuff that I deserved and deserved to be, you know, <laughs> dished out, whatever it was I dished out, but I'm going to come out with the least painful consequence. You know what I mean? You have to tell yourself that. Uh, to keep yourself going, keep your head above the water. Mm. Fearlessly and wonderfully made. That's all of us. <laughs> oh, man, that is a wonderful um, 
um, way to I think Monica just mentioned Psalms 139 14. Wow. Yeah. That's wonderful. <laughs> Renato Monica, thank you for sharing. Um, just so beautiful. Clor Clorinda, um, what what is your um what would you like to say to mom about just those statements that she just made? Like decide on it, do it. I am extraordinary. Um, women can achieve anything. Uh, what are your thoughts there, Clorinda? Um, I agree. And, <laughs> and that, um, these are, you know, like, these are really things that honestly, I, I, you know, they, well, I don't know, it might be cliche or, you know, um, yeah, but it like these, the, honestly, are, are things that mum has kind of, you know, spoken into us and demonstrated, you know, it, was, it wasn't just led by um, how she taught us about life. Yeah, it was she, yeah, completely led by example. Um, and for me, um, you know, it, with mum, it's always just, it's always been about possibility. You know, when I, um, when I was um, about to um, graduate high school, um, it was all, you know, you don't, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. You can, you don't have to do nine to five. That's not the only option. There are so many options. What else is there? Mum would always say, what, what else is possible? That was always a question. What else? Um, and um, yeah, mum would send, mum would send me, uh, I was just, I was thinking about this earlier today that mum used to send me um, articles from, um, you know, entrepreneurial magazines, or she'd send me copies of, even while I was living here, when I, once I'd moved here 10 years ago, was sending me copies of Forbes magazines, or in Australia would, would do the same thing, um, or, you know, or when I was about to graduate, she was cutting out articles and showing me articles of all these inspiring young women, you know, achieving these amazing things in business, and just, but you know, it would would provide me with all of that inspiration and, and encouragement. But then also would demonstrate it in her life, in how she was living life, and so we could we could see that it was possible. It wasn't just something that she said. It was yeah, it was something that she continues to show us. Yes. Um, that you know that really any yeah, it's the truth that anything is possible. Um, and I, I I was reflecting on that today about the that I just I, I was I was in the shower before the session thinking yeah you know mum used to send me those um Forbes magazines and and of course realized that last year mm. a journalist from Forbes approached me and and profiled me in Forbes um, for, mm. for my work in my business and I only just connected the two wow and so um yeah, no, it kind of made me emotional in the shower. I was like, wow, that, yeah, yeah that I've, I'm still kind of reveling in that a little bit. That that's what mom used to always do. My, that, the article that was written about me was just the kind of article that mom sent me, you know, which would continue to send me when I was graduating and when I was living here and when things got really hard for me, mom knows, you know, how difficult things were for me in my business in the early days and she would and it didn't matter it did it, it didn't matter I feel like with mum it never mattered what our circumstances were mm -hmm. it never those circumstances never determined what she felt was possible for us ever it just it didn't she mum could always see past Mum could always see possibility um and it wasn't to it wasn't to ignore what we were going through or you know mm. kind of brush over it it was just just her perspective that she could that where we were wasn't what determined us or determined our lives or determined what was going to happen there was always something possible Plus, oh. I'm really mm. Clarinda. thank you for sharing those uh, beautiful words yeah about mom uh, thank you for that. Philadelphia, what would you like to uh, say to that? Just following on from what mom and uh, Clarinda had shared. 
Um, I, I tell everybody that my mom's my inspiration because, like, she, she doesn't let anything stop her from doing what she wants to do. Age, not circumstance, nothing. She wants to do it. To do it, she'll get it done. And I have complete faith. Like, if, if I need help with something and I, I know that I have my mom, I like, I know it's going to be okay. I never worry when I know that I have her. It's like this solid foundation that can't be shook. You know, I know it's all going to be okay. And when I tell people, like when I tell people that she's, you know, she's in her 60s and she's working full time and she's at university learning something completely new. Like they just can't, they're so, they can't believe it. And they're, they're inspired too. Like they, she, but like for like, me, I never feel like, um, so I've, I've met people like who are my age in the late thirties and they feel like their life is just going to be the same or they've resigned to the fact that like, they got married, they had kids, they're in this whatever job. And like, it's just going to be like that forever. And like, she's my inspiration to know that like, no, I can start something new at any time. I can switch careers or I can start a new business or I can, you know, it, and any, I'm a baby, like at this age, I can, you know, it's all, there's so, you know, so that's the, the, what I get from her is like the, the, the confidence and just the knowing that I can do or start anything that I want to at any time. Um, um yeah. And and be successful at it and be happy and you know um and i think one of the things that she's I was just i was just telling my sister about this the other day is one of the things that mom always instilled in us was um she always talked about self-care but like before it was cool like before <laughs> before it became a meme like it was that was always the thing always make sure get enough rest uh eat well, drink enough, look after yourself. And it's been the thing that's the, the main thing that's helped me through my hardest times and being a mother myself. Um, it's, the, it's the thing that uh, it allows me to do it as well as I do it. It's just, and her reminders, she's always there reminding me to do it. <laughs> to look after self, to come look after anybody else, to come look after your kids if you don't look after yourself first. Mm -hmm. So make sure you're putting yourself first. And um, you, she inspired me to go back to the gym as well because she <laughs> she was seeing like, so she had a me personal too. trainer for like I'm a year and like she didn't tell mm -hmm. it. And then well, she told me her results or how much weight she had lost and like, how many push-ups she could do and I was like oh my god my mom can do more push-ups than me and, I was and, and so now we're all me you and, it, like, and our younger sister we're all hitting the gym yeah yeah <laughs> like this can't happen I cannot be out of my <laughs> we need at least to be mom. at mom's level <laughs> <laughs> she's got yeah. us on the wall sit so I can't I can I can do two minutes on the wall but 42 <laughs> nah no <laughs> I have no reason. <laughs> no. <laughs> so inspiration. Wow. Just so beautiful to hear from Clarinda, you know, from uh, Philadelphia, you know, and to hear from um, uh, both uh, your side of the story. And uh, yeah, Florence, you have just so inspired so many of us, even the comments. I can't keep up with all the comments here it might take me a week to go through all of them, mm. uh, but it's just so amazing, so amazing. And Thank I just you. don't know, um, you know, you have touched so many lives, even going back to 1977 and even before that, your time in Loreto, in uh, uh, St. Joe, St. John of Arc, yeah? Yes, yeah, St. John of Arc. Yeah, your school mm -hmm. in Sinatoka. Um, yeah, just so beautiful, <clears throat> the memories that you remembered and and you've touched so many lives from that time and even until now. Um, what is your plan uh, after, or like what is what is 2023 or 24 looking like for you, Florence? Yeah, yeah. Um, gee, you know, <laughs> I'm not the sort of person that looks too far ahead. I sort of come from the, Look, I know I'm going to be doing something in law. I know that it probably will be to do with mediation, which is an area of interest for me. 
um, or, or if not, then maybe something to do with family law. But I like mediation because, as we know, mediation, you're more likely to have a lot of parties get a bit of the pie. Everybody gets a bit of something. Mm -hmm. If you go to court and have, have, a, you know, have it fought in court, there's only going to be one winner. Somebody's going to cry. Mm. So I like mediation because we can bring the you know disgruntled people together and say, okay, let's see how we can make this work so everybody gets a little bit of something, then I feel good. And I feel like I can make a contribution there, having you know lived a little bit of life and had a few ups and downs. So I can have empathy for people that are going through that situation. So that's how it's looking for me at the moment. But I don't put too much emphasis on it because it's a I know it's a year away, but I just sort of operate with do the best I can today. You know, maybe I maybe I have this malu or fever from home. I don't know, but it's serving me. It's suiting me. It suits me. It works well. <laughs> I don't look too far ahead. Uh, I just take a leap of faith and you know jump, take a leap of faith off the cliff and then grow wings as I you know jump down kind of thing. Um, I use the analogy and I give this to my girls. Don't get too caught up about looking too far ahead. Just imagine that you're driving from Sydney to Melbourne at night and all you have is the headlight in the car ahead of you. That's all you can see and that's all you need. You don't need to, your headlight to see all the way to Melbourne. You just need enough to get you from here to there. And then when you turn the corner, it'll show you, you know, how much more you can go. But that's pretty much my philosophy because things change, especially now things are changing so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The legal landscape is changing so quickly. Opportunities are changing. I don't know what's going to be there for me uh, mm. come 2023, but I'm very optimistic that the right thing will be there for me just when I get there. I'm very confident about that, so I don't worry about it. I just worry about getting my assignments in on time, <laughs> making sure I'm in the good books of the professors. You know how it is. <laughs> So that when I need an extension and I have to go and carry carry for an extension, I can get one. <laughs> yes, I know we haven't changed, have we? has <laughs> gone across the Testament Sea over yeah. the state, yeah? Yeah, big time, big time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Oh my goodness. Uh, this is such a beautiful Talandoa. I just wish we could you know, stay so much longer, even more of your classmates from Loreto oh, are just logging in now. Oh, so my some goodness. people big, might have just tagged uh, the wow. classmates. So it's just big wonderful. loloma to them. Wow. Big loloma to my oh, This is just sisters. so beautiful. Vinak, vinak wakaleo. So to mm. bring us to the conclusion of our Talanoa, I will go to Serbia and go to Oahu and then we'll <laughs> end with mom um, on, uh, you know, any last comments that you'd like to share um, to the audience or to mom, um, over to you, Philadelphia, and keeping the International Women's Day uh, celebration in mind as well. Um, I just wanted to comment on what you were saying last about um, uh, just taking things step by step, just baby steps. The big thing that's helped me through stressful situations is just, just take it day by day. Uh, don't get overwhelmed with the big picture, just, mm. you know, Trade on the things that you couldn't do today, things you couldn't control today, and that's and that's a huge help. Um, and uh, yeah, um, there's yeah, there, there's not enough time to uh, tell all the stories um, about my mum that uh, make her so amazing, and that have, all the things that have inspired us, and the stories that we love to tell our friends about her, um, but. Yeah, um, I hope your listeners got a, a little taste of, you know, what she's like. <clears throat> Definitely seen the comments, they've been inspired too, so I'm so happy for that. And, um, yeah, um, thank, thank you for having us on, Dr. T. Um, and thanks for all the fact checkers in the <laughs> comment section. Yeah. The best yeah. Awesome. Like, they're yeah. so helpful. <laughs> the best, yeah. the best. That's it, the best. Oh, you, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh, and happy, happy International Women's Day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's uh, some fans of yours from uh, the village of Namatakula in Nandronga. They sing uh, Dolobina to both of you. 
Yeah. So there you go. So some some nandrong offense uh, saying bula mm-hmm. in Naka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Philadelphia. <laughs> Clarinda? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I guess just to kind of roll off of what Delhi was saying, um, just not enough time to tell all the amazing stories and, you know, um, yeah, I'm just... <laughs> I, I what what what's really um what's been really fun about tonight is um seeing all the love from Fiji and from everywhere in the in the comments and I can't and it makes sense I think um I think you know growing up um we kind of we didn't quite understand what all the buzz was about with um with Miss Hibiscus and why you know people were so kind of taken by mum mm-hmm. and we didn't maybe quite get it when we were growing up but now you know being adults being mums and um you know and 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 being on this call and kind of watching all the comments I'm like oh yeah no this it makes sense that mm. I because now who I know my mum to be and who I how how I have my, you know, my my life, my experience with mum and all that I've been able to learn and all that I've been able to become, all the things that I've been able to make possible in my life because of mum. I'm like, oh, it, it, yeah, it rubbed off. She was like this before us. Mm. Um, she was this incredible and, and glowing and um intelligent and um you oh. know um uh, um what's the word um oh can you can you hear me yes yes oh be. okay i think my audio cut out um yeah just yeah super quick and intelligent and um inspiring and so, and i can see that the the glow rubbed off clearly, you know, um, in the greater community and in, in the Fijian community. And, um, and that's so cool. Cause that's my mom. <laughs> and I'm just really proud to be your daughter. And, um, you, that, yeah, mm. yeah, no, I'm just, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm just really grateful, really grateful. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, Thanks so much for having us, Dr. T. It's been and awesome. And and awesome. And and awesome. And Thank you so Thank much, you so uh, much uh, Philadelphia and Clarinda, for those beautiful words. And over to you, Florence. Uh, last comments or wow. anything else you'd like to share? Wow. It's been a most enjoyable evening for me, Dr. T. I thoroughly enjoyed this. I was very nervous all day today, as I told the girls. I, I didn't know how things would go. But I just want to thank you just for having us on this platform. I'm just so grateful and thank you that I can be here with my daughters and we can have a Talanoa and that it flowed beautifully. No, no, um, no pretense. We just whatever it is, what it is. And I absolutely love that you have this platform for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, Thank you for that. And especially on this woman's uh, woman's celebration. And one further thing, I just want to offer my help to any of our women that are listening that might need some encouragement or maybe trying to go back to school or struggling through uni. Mm. And if they need to chat, I'm here. It's not hard to find me or, uh, you know, health issues when we're, you know, struggling with weight loss, anything. If I can help anybody, I'm happy to, love to, love to. No judgment, just help anybody where they're at, so. Um, yeah, love your forum. Everyone, please share all Dr. T's videos. I've listened <laughs> to some of them and they are most interesting. They are so real. They're authentic. It's as it is. People are speaking about the experience. They're telling, they're talking from their heart. Um, and you learn so much. You just see the real people as they are. So it's a great education, Dr. T. And I'll just add one more thing. Um, you know, how when you bring up your children, and you can tell them something over and over and they'll never listen they'll never believe you and then they hear it from a third party like you and they go wow that's actually quite profound so we need you we need you just for that because you you help to instill things that parents are not so successful at 
but they look at you as the authority and because you said it oh yeah so it's true it's true yeah I'll, I'll go do it so for that i thank you for that and keep doing it dr t uh, it's you know your following is amazing you have a huge following now and um it's, it's fantastic it's it's beautiful it's it's fiji it's what we do right no pretense it's just we whatever roles that's it that's us <laughs> i love the the you know the whole notion of go with the flow uh i've always you know used that mantra even when i was teaching at the university of auckland uh yeah, you know sometimes yeah. when i'm teaching and students are worrying about you know so many things you know that they have to mm -hmm. do and you know i always tell them you know like as you said if you miss an assignment you know go and talk to your professor tell them mm -hmm. exactly what you're going through at the end yeah. of the day we are we are humans, you know, um, mm. things we face, you may not meet the deadline and that's mm. okay. The only yeah. thing is communicate, you share what yeah. you are going through. Yeah. Um, someone there will understand you, someone there will listen to you. Mm. And I'm so pleased that this platform has, you know, able to yeah. bring us all together. You know, yeah. I started off this program for our little, little Fijians, um, mm. but it's nice to see the, uh, you know, those who are young at heart also joining in. And yeah. why not? Why not? You know, we yeah. love to tell Noah. We love yeah. to share our stories. And what a memorable evening it is tonight. You know, it's what March the eighth, twenty twenty two, and here we are. Um, you know, sharing your story, and also not just yours, Florence, but we have your two beautiful uh, Nandronga princesses here. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Joining you mm. too. So Vinakawa Kalevo Florence. Yeah, thank you, Dr. T. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, absolutely nice. love tonight. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And uh, you know, thank you to our listeners for um, you know, listening in and for all the comments and for all the help when we were looking for information. Marvelous the participation. Thank you. So you and so I'm, I'm so I'm so I'm ending with sending more kangaroo hugs and more koala bear hugs. <laughs> oh, and Sydney, I wanted, Australia. I wanted to um, wish Mum an early happy birthday, and everybody go hit up Mum with happy birthdays for <laughs> the twelfth. The twelfth. Oh, right. I'm not gonna say yeah How old? that's irrelevant but wish a happy yeah. birthday everybody <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. so i was thinking to conclude our talano tonight because uh, there's some people who joined us late uh we can end with uh, the song of levuka one more time uh to conclude our session uh mm -hmm. that's a lovely way a lot of still uh, of your loretto uh ex callers have just joined in uh, also mm -hmm. students of saint john the wavi and saint mm -hmm. john of arc uh, those of you who've just joined in, and also mm -hmm. the graduates of uh, uh, the School of Catering. I know many mm -hmm. of them would remember you. And there's yeah. some as well commenting on those who remember the two girls here, uh, the two oh. children in La Sova. Um, oh, yes. So, yes. so there's yes. a few people commenting, so that's nice. Uh, yeah. I think Betty Blakelock. Yes, Auntie yes. Betty, Auntie Betty. Nakalinaka. Yeah. <laughs> Auntie so Betty. Oh, them. yeah. If Philadelphia lived in Auntie Betty's house. We were just finishing. We would have boiled eggs for breakfast and Auntie Betty will have boiled eggs. Philadelphia didn't want ours. She was in Auntie Betty's house eating her boiled <laughs> eggs. Like Auntie Betty, Auntie Betty, Blake Locks, boiled eggs taste better than ours. So, <laughs> so hi, Auntie Betty. <laughs> this is so beautiful. Wow. Yeah. To all of you who joined us tonight to commemorate the International Women's Day. And uh, we're bringing you live from Hawaii, uh, from Serbia, and from Sydney. And I hope you all enjoyed this wonderful Talano session. And uh, uh, again, uh, to remember the beautiful memories of Loreto and St. John the Wadi, we will play um, the beautiful song from the beautiful village of Kulukulu in Nandronga uh, for all of us to enjoy from uh, Ofa Ali, a beautiful song of Levuka. Nakavakaleo. Yeah.
of uh, of uh, Ali Vinaka Vinaka Vakalevu uh, for joining us again tonight. Vavini Vinaka ve Clarinda, ve Philadelphia, ve Katarina Kine, ve Florence Julian, and anon Rosemo Menikua, me tome Vita Lanoa, and avukini vakana nu mini International Women's Day. Osa vaka mwati chukani ve kiumni kere sara, naka vakalevu na vito kwa ni maina prokara mongo, and the resemba tali chukana mbongi ni mataka na walu na kaloko. Osa vaka mwati ani ve kiumni kere sara, ni mwati, ni mwati mata. Nakawakaleo.